Greetings viewers. This is the second part of the Riga Tango Spinner video that precedes this one. You don't have to watch part one to understand what's going on here, but it will provide you with the complete picture of how and why I went down this path. Now, I own a nice 32 year old Riga planar three turntable and courtesy of Tango Spinner, I upgraded a few of its key components. Tango Spinner specializes in manufacturing upgrades for the popular British Riga brand range of turntables, old and new. There's a link below to my previous video and the Tango Spinner website. To recap, I replaced the original subplatter. That's the spinning platform that the glass platter sits on. The original is made of a polycarbonate resin or plastic with a metal shaft. The Tango Spinner subplatter is made of solid machined aluminum that looks amazing. Along with that, I removed the original brass bearing and bearing sleeve and installed the Tango Spinner's zirconia bearing and the Vesconite high loop sleeve. If you want to learn what that is, please watch the previous video. I also substituted the three original rubber feet with the with Tango Spinner's stylish and adjustable aluminum ones. Lastly, the plastic two-speed pulley and single belt was upgraded to a machined single-speed brass unit that accommodates two silicone belts. Tango Spinner sells the subplatter, bearing, pulley, and belts together as the Canero kit for $146 and the bearing sleeve for $90 and the new feet are $60. So the total comes to just under $300 plus shipping. And I suppose the obvious question is, does investing $300 in an old Planar 3 make a noticeable difference in how the turntable sounds and performs? Well, the challenge here is that, that I do not own two first-generation Planar 3s, where I could upgrade one and leave the other stock, and that could be quite a straightforward A-B comparison. So what did I do? Well, firstly, I decided to compare the stock Riga to a turntable I know very well. My old Lynn Sondek LP12. Yes, the same turntable that British enthusiasts used to compare the Planar 3 to, referring to it as the poor man's Lynn. The 1988 Lynn is stock as well and has the Valhalla power supply and excellent ITOC arm. A very nice table, but not their latest and greatest. It's been the most often used turntable in my collection since I acquired it about a year ago. And before I installed the upgrades to the Riga, I mounted the same great Audio-Technica moving magnet cartridge to its tone arm to match the one that's on the Lin. I then performed a few listening sessions and took copious notes on how each table sounded. I find it surprising that the Riga and Lin with the same cartridge could present the music so differently. I concluded that the LP12 sound is more easygoing, layered, and rich in the bass department. The high frequencies are clear and very natural sounding, but it doesn't reach out and grab you. There's, there is fantastic separation between the instruments and the music has a genuine sense of three-dimensionality. I would not describe the bass as punchy or super tight. It's just well balanced and well integrated. It doesn't call attention to itself. On the other hand, the stock Planar 3 had a more upfront sounding treble and upper mid-range. It definitely commands your attention and it will be noticed. But doesn't become strident or annoying unless you really crank up the volume. The lower frequencies had less weight than the Lin, but were audibly tighter, agile, and rhythmic. The soundstage was impressively wide, but not as deep back to front as the Lin. But the Riga did bop along with the music a little better. By the end of the listening sessions, it became clear that overall I did prefer the richer and three-dimensional tone of the LP12 over the stock Planar 3. This conclusion didn't surprise me at all, although I was kind of rooting for the Riga to give it a bit of a scare. How do they compare after the Tango Spinner upgrades? 
Well, I brought the two turntables to my number three system. And in there, I put together a little combo that includes a couple of classic British components. Starting out with a 30 watt per channel Name Nate 3 integrated amp. Now, they're not easy to find in the US, and when I spotted this one on eBay, I didn't hesitate and clicked that Buy It Now button. The speakers are the rare and amazing Rogers Studio Ones. They were called bookshelf type speakers, but they're close in dimensions to the modern KLH Model 5s. And they need to sit on low, lightweight stands, certainly not on a bookshelf or on the floor, perish the thought. The NA3 doesn't have the phono board installed, so I have employed a nice Parasound phono preamp. And the Blue Sound Note is just there for music streaming and obviously wasn't needed. And if you're interested, the speaker cable is by Van Dam, and the RCA interconnects are from shit. Well, I have to say, my opinion has shifted. You could say that the tables have turned. Although the Lynn remains a more well-rounded and refined unit, more audiophile, you could say, I'm very strongly drawn to the entertaining sound of the Riga Planar 3. The upgrades gave it a more relaxed sound, less edgy and in your face, without losing its high frequency crispness and toe-tapping, head-bobbing, rhythmic qualities. The soundstage now has some depth that it was previously missing. So, the differences between the two turntables is not so clear-cut now. If I made a car analogy, the LP12 is like a comfortable luxury car. Very nice to drive, has a good amount of get-up-and-go, and the plush leather seats and softer suspension smooths out the rough roads. It's fantastic on a road trip. The Tango Spinner upgraded Planar 3 is like a less expensive sporty model that's had a few extra performance mods added on. It's great fun to drive, quick around corners, but the ride's a little rougher and less refined. Which one would you want to drive more often? I, I suppose it would depend on your mood, right? So the gap between the two contenders for my affections has been narrowed, which is actually pretty great. Regarding the Tango Spinner upgrades, if you watch part one of this story, you'd have seen that the upgrades were super easy to perform. It was no special tools or anything like that. Anyone could do it. Compared to the competition from companies who sell similar products, the Tango Spinner parts are priced considerably lower than what the others are charging. So to start out, that's a tremendous value in my opinion. And going by what I've read in numerous hi-fi forums and Facebook groups, Tango Spinner has a stellar reputation for the quality of their products and their superb customer service. Gus receives high marks all around. Where can I go from here? Well, Tango Spinner sells a Delrin platter that replaces the stock glass one. Now, Delrin is a heavy thermoplastic with beneficial attributes that suit it well for turntables. And even Riga sells an updated motor kit and power supply, but that would set me back almost $700. Speaking of upgrades, the absolute champion leader in upgrades is the Lin LP12. There are numerous manufacturers out there, including Lin, who make replacement parts for virtually every component in the table. It's amazing what's available, and you can easily spend thousands to fully trick out yours. I mean, you can substitute every single piece with a third-party replacement. The results I got with my Planar 3 with the Tango Spinner upgrades enables it to compete very well with my other turntables and may have dethroned my LP12 as the favorite. Well, we'll see. I'm planning some upgrades for that one in the future as well, but they can, as I said, can get very pricey indeed. And if you'd like to help me upgrade my LP12, please join my Patreon. It's very reasonable, and you will get behind-the-scenes stuff 
that I don't put up here or on my Instagram. Anyway, thanks for watching. And right now I'd like to request a like and a subscribe from you. Obviously you stayed until the end, so you enjoyed it, right? Peace out.